I'm Frank the Tank, and this is 12 Rigs of Christmas. Previously on WFO Concepts, 12 Rigs of Christmas. Santa's out. The goddamn Grinch taking my bag of presents, electric sleigh taking a crap on me. Hope I can find somebody somewhere out here. Whoa, I hear a sound. There's got to be somebody over there. the top of the Sierras just after I pulled out of Nevada. Holy and no I, way. I got abscounded by the Grinch. The Grinch? The Grinch, big green guy. Where do we need to go? We need to go back up there and find his cave, his lair. And we need to break in there. And we need to take him down and we need to get those presents. We need to save Christmas. Save Christmas? For all the little boys and girls of the world. I'm in, hop in. Even the foreign ones. <laughs> okay, let me get in. This thing's nice. We need to get out. Oh, it's my parking brake. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh! Let's take the parking brake off, Frank, and let's okay. go! <laughs> get it out! We're off to a good start. What just happened there, Frank? Well, I mean, I, I blacked out. I don't know what happened. Do you, do you know what happened? I feel like we just put on a clinic here in Winch Hill 4. We just used all eight to get us up to the top, I yeah. feel like. Let the puppies eat, you know? I just went through about 10,000 miles worth of traction on my tires, I think. That'll happen. Yeah. All right, well, Frank, before we get out here, after that impressive show, um, I want to show everybody your rig, right? Right, yeah. Even though we got to save Christmas, the important thing is, oh man. So, look at this dash. What is this vehicle? 
So this is a 2005 Jeep LJ. Um, so, so hold on, this is an aluminum dash. You, aluminum dash. What is that right Don't there? Pull that off. Is that, is that an iPod? That's an iPad. Yeah. An iPad. Technology. Yeah, and then you got all these buttons. What are those? All that. So this is a Switch Pros uh, RTR12. What's this? That is a uh, now. You know, oh. These two don't look like they go together. I know. Hey, I got your junk but, in my hand right now. This is a manual stick shift. NV4500. NV4500, yeah. Two little custom shifter. Yeah, that's that is a custom shifter. Everybody at home can learn a little bit from this that. Custom piece of scrap metal that I used I to UPS make that to you. Overnight UPS from WFO. That's service from WFO yeah. while you're building this in your garage. Right. Yeah. Uh, so Atlas transfer case. So let's uh, hop out of this thing and uh, do a little walk around. Show the people. Show the people at home what Frank the Tank uh, gets around in. So. Uh, this is an LJ. Yes. And you started out with long arm kit, Dana 44s, when I first met you back in the day. Actually started out with a short arm kit, Dana 44s and uh, 35s on it. And that's when we I first met it. on, the, on yeah. the Jeepers Jamboree. So it's crazy I met you out here in the middle of nowhere after my sleigh goes down and I get absconded by the Grinch. You know, I'd say it's no coincidence. It is no coincidence. You had short arm with 44s, it's a Rubicon model. Right. Uh, so then we went to a long arm Rubicon Express kit. Uh, that was kind of the first phase. That's gone. That's uh, not completely. Actually. Okay. We yeah. May, we may come back to that. And then but now, uh, currently, it's uh, Dana 60 up front and uh, Dana 80 in the rear. 60, 60 80. 80. And and who 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 set you up with this? I, you know, uh, it was. You were the broker. On I that. was the broker. Customer, customer of ours had an 80 and a 60, and they were really affordable from uh, J Ray. And uh, you purchased those, and that's really where it all went downhill with Frank the Tank. That's yeah. That's where things got expensive. You could say that. Yeah. So let's talk about this. So Dynatrack Dana 60, right? Yeah. My hat's in my way. Uh, PSC Hydro Assist, you got the tie rod down on the knuckles in the regular spot, right? Yep. That allows you to keep it low to the ground and have all the up travel. All of the up travel. Crossover steering, but underneath the arm on the Dynatrack 60, uh, you got air bumps, you got king coilovers, um, you have a WFO truss there that mounts the ram and the track bar. Um, we actually custom built this for you. You did. To fit yeah. the Dynatrack axle. Um, and then you got the, uh, I think those are the WFO coilover top towers too. And what size uh, shocks do you have? That's a 12 inch by 2.5. So what's this? That's a Nitto 40 inch uh, mud grappler. You still have the Rubicon Express belly pan on and there. We use the belly pan to uh, create the three link and the four link. Which we've done that a bunch at WFO. And so we basically sold you the parts kit to do this on the concrete floor in your garage. Absolutely, yeah. Yep. And then. But you did something here too as well, right? Yeah, we stretched it. Uh, it's actually stretched a little in the front and a little in the rear, uh, about 110 wheelbase. And then poison spider corners and fenders. Right. Right, and you did the uh, outboard rear shock coilover mounts. Yep. So we basically sent you the, uh, uh, the builder's kit, right? You know, it, it's funny you say sent me. I, I believe that there was a, a little secrecy involved in uh, the sending of those parts to me at the time. Oh yeah, how, remember how that worked? I have no idea how we got them to you. Well, you know, not everyone knows my alias, Frank the Tank. And uh, a guy by the name of Danny that worked for you at the time yeah. mm -hmm. was secretly sending me these parts via the Judd Express. Oh yeah. Because you told me that with my start time of a month before the Jeepers Jamboree that year, that oh, there we, was no way. Let's rewind. We forgot to tell everybody that you decided to go one tons, three link, four link, 40s. Was it and a V8? No. 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 One tons, three links, 40s, and the Atlas. Yes. Yeah. All. One all month before, one the month before the Jamboree. And you're not necessarily a professional fabricator at this point. No, no. If you go around the uh, the rig, you can actually see the progression of my welds. I like uh, it. You know, as I got a little bit better. So we delivered the parts via Judd down to your house. Yes. Um, and in one month, you were able to produce 
most of this. Right, yeah. Yeah. Everything except for the uh, engine transmission. Yeah, and so Dana 80 in the rear, we built you a truss. It's got triangulated four link. Right. And I think you did the Genrite gas tank, right? Yes. Yep. And then uh, uh, you got the Genrite tail lights, LEDs. LEDs, yeah. Yeah, you know what that stands for? Luminescent everyday. Light. Oh. emitting diode, oh, yeah, you know, know and this looks like a great spot for your spare tire. Custom job right there. Yeah, that's nice spot. Why do we even yeah. carry that thing? You know, I haven't figured it out because I haven't used it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it does hold rope, you know, uh, pretty well back there. So right that, here. That's yep. Yeah, okay. Never used the rope either, but it's there. So stretch wheelbase, uh, what gear ratio do you have? 513s. So 513s, Detroit in the rear, huh? Detroit front and rear. Front and rear. And yeah. it seems that this Dana 80 has been eating axle shafts. Well, yeah. 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 Uh, two of them this year so far. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, we got two brand new ones today. And uh, we're good to go so far. As the evidence will show, they're working out pretty good. So, fast forward another year after that Jeeper Jamboree and tell us what you got under the hood here. All right. So, this one. <coughs> she hits me. <coughs> Santa's been hitting it a little hard, if you know fun, what I mean. Fun little project. Uh, so, originally I, uh, I purchased a uh, LQ9 off of uh, Facebook Marketplace. Which? You know, a real, real, real good guy who. Guy seemed it. like a real straight shooter. Yeah, and he bought it from a real straight shooter. You know. And what was wrong with that motor? So, I pulled the heads on it, and uh, three of them were half full of water and, and rusted. Solid. Solid. So then what'd you get? So then I started over with a, uh, a bare block, uh, went through and built this engine uh, complete, completely from scratch. Uh, it has a LK9 block and the uh, crank and those are about, oh, and the heads are about the only parts that came off the uh, original LQ9, everything else. And I see you must have gone to Cragen or O'Reilly and got this uh, bent that's summer, upper that's a summer radiator summer. hose right here, which yeah. is nice. Electric fan, which you know I don't really like that, but no. it's Combined in there. The custom bent radiator. Yep, and uh, that uh, cold air intake is working really good right in that area. Right. What is this? This well, looks like... We Race car stuff? Yeah. Safety wire? That's, that's race car stuff, right? Yeah. You probably wouldn't understand it, Santa. Yeah. Uh, but we uh, we had the clearance. Is that the, zip uh, tie and some bailing wire? Double double security yep. there off of the fuel rail, which is uh, it's a you know bomb proof anchor point. Drive by cable, huh? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, and you decided to do this a month before Jeepers Jamboree, right? Or on the first time, no. And you, did we make it to the Jeep for Jamboree? Both times, yeah. Both times. You did this all by yourself in your garage. In the garage, yeah. So NB4500 swap, Atlas, LS, in less than a month, on the trail, wheeling. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, the engine was built before that month uh, timeline started. The engine took me about three months to build, just, uh, you know, going through the whole pre-assembly and uh you know putting a few hours in here and there it took about three months but once it was built yeah a month to put it in and you and, uh, you showed up there at the jeepers jamboree and did you have any dash or gauges or anything working absolutely not no yeah no uh we had the uh little control unit that uh comes from my holly terminator uh duct tape to the dash at the time so you could see so. if it was hot or cold or oil yeah, pressure yeah, yeah see if it was on or off i mean yeah. you know important stuff like that yeah yeah and it and, worked uh, out no music which was really the yeah. biggest problem we ran into yeah all right well uh thanks for showing us your rig this is basically a great example of what a guy who doesn't have enough time doesn't have you know full fabrication skills but is learning this progressively shows from the beginning to the end you know to where it's at right now and you're ready to do a whole new revamp on it, right? Yeah, we're getting ready for a few new things, a uh, new roll cage, and uh, going to redo the suspension a little bit here. You think that you're going to do anything with those hydro assist lines right there? You know, it, everyone gives me a hard time about those, and uh, they've been on my list. Oh, <laughs> they've been on my list to uh, shorten up for a while, but you know, it's a great conversation starter, as you just saw right now. Absolutely. Well. It just goes to prove that uh, kind of the winning package on an LJ is three-link front, triangulated four-link rear, stretch the rear, 
put one tons, buy all the parts from some guys who seem like real straight shooters, put it together in your garage, go wheeling. That's it. Yeah, what more could you ask for? <laughs> well, thanks. Let's uh, see if we can't get up the hill and find this Grinch. Let's find your presence. All right. Hey, Santa, the Chief's over there. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, whoops. All right.